All right, so let's go about starting to build our action list. And this is kind of, I guess, the reason why you, you came here. So we've done the graphics. We've got everything, all the basic setup with the graphics. We've, we've created our menu elements. So yeah, this is the place in the video you want to fast forward to, to if, if, <laughs> if you want to get into the, the, the meat of it. So I'm creating a new action list asset file here. I'm going to call it uh, comic book. And I start setting up our parameters, use parameters. Now here's this one thing that is uh, where we got to start. When you, when you create a dialog line, uh, like so, dialog, you need to add this, you need these. Is this a player line? If not, is it a speaker? Who is the one speaking? And as well as the dialog text. So how do we do that with parameters? That's very, it's actually kind of simple. So create a new parameter. We're gonna call this is player. We're gonna select that as a Boolean. Default value is false. This could be true, no, it's up to you. Then in the uh, dialog, we're gonna add this first. How? You can't do it like a checkbox like you do in the, in the regular dialog tree. Instead, you need to use uh, the action list check parameter. Is player equal to true? If it is, do this. If it's not, do that. So you need to build it like you build any other action list, right? Secondly, if it's not a player, what should that parameter be? Yeah, that can be a game object. We do. If not player, which game object should it be? Uh, what else do we need? We need to uh, define the menu elements that should be hidden and or should be shown and then hidden. First of all, we need to define what menu are we using. So what menu to affect it's gonna be a string because it's a, it's a text field the menu is called comic style it's down here so default value is gonna be comic style whoops that was wrong comic style we can add, set that as default value that would be much easier for us add a new action menu change state turn on menu what menu to affect the parameter is what many to affect. And since it has a default value, it's going to work right off the bat. We want to do this in both cases. What else do we need to add? Um, which background should we display? So we do a new one. Background. It's also a string. Sorry, it's a string. Default value can also, we can set the default value. We only have one background right now, so let's set it to be large. Background large. Add a new action. Menu. Change state. Ha! We're going to show the menu element in the menu containing the parameter what menu to affect. And the element should, to show should be the element, uh, should be the parameter background. We do this in both cases. Next parameter should be what portrait to display. Portrait. It's also a string value. Default value can be max talk. We can, now we can copy this one. It's much quicker. What menu to affect? The menu containing the element is what menu to affect parameter. The element to show is the portrait. Copy and paste. Now we're done. Create a new parameter. We have the portrait. So now we need to decide what speech bubble. Speech bubble. It's also a string. It works in the exactly the same way. We can use this as bubble talk as a default. The default value also helps us uh, explain to ourselves uh, further down the line what we're actually gonna put in there so it's, it's a bit of a quick reminder 
can paste our old action and now we're gonna do the speech bubble. And now is where these two branches diverge. So now we want to use the add new action dialog. So we had two. Check. Is the player, is it true? Go down the right path. If it's not true, go down the left path. So on the right path, we set this to is player. The line text should be, we haven't defined that yet. So we need to create that. Create a new parameter, dialog line. That's a string value. Set the default value to none, because we want the player must enter this. Set it in the dialog play speech button uh, box. Do the same thing here. <coughs> However, we're not checking player line. We're setting the speaker to be, if not player, then what? And the light and the text should be dialog line. We set the wait time offset. 0.4 seems to be a good value for this. It's up to you. And uh, once this is done, we add a new action, menu, turn off menu. Menu to turn off, what menu to affect. And now we're done. So what we have now created is a asset file. Uh, that can handle our menu, kind of. So let's go into our scene, let's check this. So this is the hotspot for our uh, little box here. So let's make a, a dialogue. So how, how do we use this? Yeah, action type, action list, run. It's an asset file, the comic book asset file. We're gonna run set parameters and run it. Boom. So all of these parameters that we now defined end up here. Most of them are already pre-assigned. So since we don't have much to choose from, but we can add the dialogue line to be, hello, wait until finish. That's an important one. We can copy this, paste it after. Now we can change this. So we can have the bubble change to bubble uh, think, what's the name I think? Bubble think, and we're gonna change the dialogue line name, uh, dialogue line to cheese would be nice. And I copy this. We're gonna do a third one. We're gonna change the portrait to Max Happy. We're gonna do mmm cheese. And we're gonna run this and see what happens. I know for a fact that this isn't gonna work. We're gonna fix it, but see what happens. Click it. As you can have noticed now, we, we for, forgot a very important thing. We never, never uh, defined the uh, uh, dialogue box. So we're gonna have to fix that. Let's go to the comic book again. We need to put this before the speech. So we're gonna remove these, copy, paste. Uh, these one are, this one is static. So we can use this. Uh, we don't need to use a, a parameter for this. So this one never changes. So we're gonna show the menu element, no parameter. We're gonna show them in a dialog. We're always gonna show that one. We're also, always gonna show the element name of speaker so you can copy these paste and then hook hook everything up again so let's see what happens now if we play okay so he says hello there's no label on him right now 
cheese would be nice. Mmm, cheese. If you're quick now, you notice something. The menu element never got hidden when it was done. They're just stacking them on top of each other. So fixing this is kind of simple, really. <clears throat> All you gotta do is do the same thing in reverse. So we're gonna do uh, add a new action. We're gonna uh, menu. We are gonna hide menu elements in the menu containing the element. What menu to affect? The element is gonna be the background. So copy, paste the portrait. Paste again. The speech bubble. Paste again. And the dialog line. So what's happening now is it's going to run the dialog using these parameters. Then it's going to use the same parameters to turn everything off again. So in theory, this should work. Hello. Cheese would be nice. It changed the and changed the portrait. Mm, cheese. So, so far so good. As you might have noticed, there's some some timings that are wrong. You can actually change this in the in the AC settings. See if I can find it while I'm. Is it under speech? And it's gonna be the display time factor is gonna be 0.3. And I think this will be much better. Let's see what happens. Hello. Correct speech bubble. Cheese would be nice. Thinking. Mmm, cheese. Of course, we need to tweak the, uh, the bounding boxes and everything for the so it fit within the speech bubble. So to showcase a bit how you can use this, we're moving on to my game. As you can see here, I have created a lot of menus. We have a large background, we have a small background, we have a couple of NPCs talking, Party Boy, the Bouncer, SIS, which is the little robot, and we have Maya, our protagonist, with a different, uh, some different uh, poses. We also have a couple of speech bubbles, one for speech, one to simulate an action, one to shout, one to think, one to think really loud, and one for a small thinking mode. So we move on to the action list editor. So here I can set up uh, a little intro of sorts. So when the game starts, the character moves to a marker, faces the, some directions, looking around, waits a bit, then starts a conversation. It's gonna be on the left panel, which I've named dialogue panel left, it's using the Maya comms small portrait with the regular bubble speech and she says I have arrived on site followed by the same uh, background the same portrait same bubble with a radio check over the game pauses for two seconds and on the right panel SIS drone will reply with the bubble shout to simulate that she is talking through a radio with a me mechanical voice loud and clear what do you see so how does this look in game And then the game continues. We can even build on this by using additional, uh, adding some actions to this. For example, we can switch it up a bit. And directly afterwards, we use the large background. On the pe left panel, we're gonna use Maya 
gun, large portrait, just gonna use the bubble uh, shout, and she's gonna yell, get down. Our SIS drone is going to reply with the, uh, we can pick one, we have a good one that's called jam to small. And she's going to scream help. See what this looks like. As you can see, it works great, and it's fairly easy to build pretty complex dialogues, alternating between left and right panes. You can even add one in the middle if you want to do some action scenes, or just keep the focus of the game in the center. Maybe you want to chicken out, hide some animations that you can't be bothered to, to paint. Throw up a comic book panel in the middle that hides everything, and play it out through still frames instead. There's a lot of potential with this. So I hope this video was something you enjoyed. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you on the, maybe on the Discord. We'll see. Bye.